Hey everybody! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, come on in. It's Chris here. Uh, my name is Chris and this is Daily Reflections with Chris. So thank you for those who are joining me today, who are watching. And um, we're going to read out of our Daily Reflections and we're going to talk some recovery, okay? So let's get started. Today is April the 17th and the title is called Love and Fear as Opposites. All these failings generate fear, a soul sickness in its own right. And that's from the Toe and Twelve, page 49. Fear knocked at the door. Faith answered. No one was there. I don't know to whom this quote should be attributed, but it certainly indicates very clearly that fear is an illusion. I create the illusion myself. I experienced fear early in my life and I mistakenly thought that the mere presence of it made me a coward. I didn't know that one of the definitions of courage is the willingness to do the right thing in spite of fear. Courage then is not necessarily the absence of fear. During the times I didn't have love in my life, I most assuredly had fear. To fear God is to be afraid of joy. And looking back, I realized that during the times I feared God most, there was no joy in my life. As I learned not to fear God, I also learned to experience uh, joy. Wow. That's pretty amazing, right? So many good things. So many good things. Love and fear is opposites. Wow. Let me read a piece of it again. I experienced fear early in my life. That was me. And I, and I mistakenly thought that the mere presence of it made me a coward. Also me. I didn't know that one of the definitions of courage is the willingness to do the right thing in spite of fear. Huh. I didn't know either. Courage then is not necessarily the absence of fear. So you can't have courage and fear at the same time. I, can, I believe that. I've heard that before and I've, I've, I've related to it before. I mean, I had my aha moment with that. I was like, huh, you can, you can. So during these times I didn't have love in my life, I most assuredly had fear. I'm trying to figure out why they, uh, what, where they put here love and fear as opposites. Uh, to fear God is to be afraid of joy. And looking back, I realized that during the times I feared God most, there was no joy in my life. As I learned not to fear God, I also learned to experience joy. Okay. I think that for this particular one, we're, I, I, I am going to choose to read a little bit of this Toe and Toe on page 49. So we can get a little more substance and see how uh, this reading um, relates to the to the share, right, to to this bottom part. So here it is, it has the, the, the title, the quote, and then where the, the reference, where it got it from. And here's what the writer shared, right? This is exp his experience with the terminology, his experience with fear and courage and being afraid of God, you know, fear of God and not having any joy. And I totally get that. I totally get that. But let me read a little bit out of here and then I'll tell you why I feel like I get it, okay? So now I'm on, uh, this is, Probably the first toe and toe I ever owned. I don't know. It's all ripped up now. Maybe I just use it a lot. So this is what I'm going to read from here. But this is this is a toe and toe. Oh, here's a cover. Oops. Sorry. The cover is right here. This is what it looks like. <laughs> and I got the big print just because. Uh, okay. So it says, it says, uh, when the satisfaction of our instincts for sex, security, and society become the sole object of our lives, then pride steps in to justify our excesses. In other words, right here, they're talking about the, sen the seven deadly sins of pride, greed, lust, anger, gluttony, envy, and sloth, right? And in all these areas, we found, we found. Um, somewhere in the book, it talks about our convictions galore, our convictions, right? And, or, or that list, that list that we had of everything that we had to be or that we should be or that they wanted us to be and, and what that looks like, Right. You'll be a good husband if you have this, 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 and this. You'll be a good wife if you have this, 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 and this, right? And there's a lot of people who are married that don't have all that. And there's a lot of people who have all that. And 
are not married, like kind of like me, right? But so, so I think like, wow, wow, well, where did I fall? Where did I fail? That what, I mean, like, what happened, right? So the next part says all these failings, all those failings that I did, all those times I failed, all those times I tried, all those times I thought I was doing wrong, right. All this time I exerted all my energy just to do the right thing, right? I mean, like, really, like, I like just to make things right, like, for real, for real. Not because I wanted in, anything in return. It was because I wanted to do the right thing, right? So when all those failings, all those failings generate fear, a soul sickness in its own right, then fear, in turn, generates more character defects unreasonable fear that our instincts will not be satisfied drive us to covet the possessions of others to lust for sex and power and become angry when our instinctive de demands are threatened to be envious when the ambitions of others seem to be realized while ours are not boom that's me right now we eat drink and grab for more of everything that we need fearing we shall never have enough and with genuine alarm at the prospect of work we stay lazy, yeah. We stay paralyzed because we're we're freaking out right now. We're we're thinking, oh, gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do that, and then we're paralyzed and we're not doing nothing because now we got glued to the TV, or now we're in fear, now we're hopeless, now we're stuck. That's how we get stuck. We loathe and procrastinate, or at best, we're grudging and under half steam. I'm gonna do it because I have to, but not because I really want to. That's grudgingly. All right, I guess I'll do it. That's grudgingly, right? Doing it only because other people are asking. It's not because we really, really want to. That's grudgingly. It's not. It's not out of our hearts. It's just we're just doing it because these fears are the termites that ceaselessly devour the foundations of whatever sort of life we try to build. Wow. The fears are the termites that devour the foundations of the life we are trying to build. My God. Whew. That's powerful. This is a good chapter. If you read this, the step four in the Tomatov, it talks about how fear is the chief activator of all our defects. And now it's saying right now. Fear in turn generates more character defects, of course, because now out of fear of God or fear of not living up to what the what our parents thought we should or our family members or society, right? That fear has us working in a certain way, you know, maybe trying like trying too hard or overworking or, you know, being the teacher's pet, oh, everything, everything to look good. Look at me, look at me. Be because I want to be known and seen because I'm in fear that if I'm not known or seen, I won't get promoted or I won't get married or I won't get, uh, you know, I won't get what I really want. So that's fear. That All of that is fear, right? Fear of not getting what I want. Well, guess what? That fear now, because I'm acting like this, when I don't get what I want, I start, I start acting out. So it activates my character defects. Right? And then I eat and drink and grab from everything just to try to, in other words, try to fill this void that's inside. This void that I think I'm going to fill up with a woman. This void that I think I'm going to fill up with a job. This void that I'm going to fill up with money, with food, with sex, with alcohol, with drugs. That void inside is so big that, man, it took everything around me to jump in and it was never full. Right, I took my family down. I, I mean, I didn't take them down, but I hurt them. I destroyed them. I destroyed relationships. And I can. The other day, I was going through some pictures, and I saw a picture of this girl that, man, she just, she just adored. Like she, man, that girl really, really liked me. Like, and um, and I was hesitant to date her because she had dated my friend, and not because she had dated my friend, but because my friend was my friend, and. And I didn't know what was going to happen if he found out. I mean, he was in a gang. I was like, he's going to kill me. Right? Even though I really liked her and we really had a good friendship. And, 
And she's like, I don't care what he thinks. I want to be with you. And I was like, okay. So we got together and we were together for a little while. And, you know, just being the guy that I was back then, I, I left town and I didn't tell her. And, and she called me crying. And I said, what's wrong? She was like, what do you mean what's wrong? I come to your house. I bring you balloons and I bring you flowers and I want to be with you and you left and you didn't even tell me and we've been together for so long and I was like I was like sorry I don't know what to do bye I mean like that code I was like holy like now I think about I, it's hard for me to even say that story because I want to believe that I'm not that guy still I want to believe that like what was that guy thinking what was what was Chris doing I mean there he and she was there. I mean, she was a nice. She wasn't no feita. You know, she was cute. She was cute and she was smart. And she she had, you know, she got she had that family dynamics going on. You know, she, it was good. And this boy right here was couldn't accept it. Couldn't reciprocate it. Couldn't. I mean, he was off chasing money. And trust me. I don't know what he thought he was doing because what he went to go do, ain't nobody getting paid a lot of money to go do that. But he thought it was a good idea to go to Michigan with his friends and, and go um, pick asparagus. Folks, that ain't lucrative, okay? <laughs> it's really hard. And I, I'm i very appreciative of the people who still do it. But looking back, um, you know, I feel like I hate to say that I needed that experience because I don't think anybody needs experience like that. You know, um, I really hurt that person. And I just, I just remembered, I probably owe her an amends. I, I think I, I think I made her an amends, but I'm not sure. I might do, I'm not do, do an inventory around that. I might do write about that a little bit and see where, 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 uh, where it stands and pray about it, of course. Right, because um, I don't know anything about her. I mean, her mom died, and I think she she got back with her with her boyfriend that he was my friend. I mean, she, he's the baby's daddy, so I think they got back together. I'm not sure, but anyway. So, um, what are you talking about? Yeah, so I'm I'm grabbing all of this, and I never and I never had enough. I wasn't satisfied, and she was like a hundred, right? And my defects pop out and they just, they ruin people. I mean, like, golly, I, I just, but, you know, love and fear is opposites. If fear, to, if fear would just was just fear, and I could have courage to love, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I could see them as quite opposites. But if I'm in fear, my and my character defects come out. Yeah, there's no love in that. There's no love in that. And I've, you know, I've, I've, I've said this before, and I might have heard it before, I don't know, but I remember there was a time in my life when, when it was like, um, nothing, nothing separate from love is not, you know, think, if it's not, if it's not, Love is, is not God. Because I, I, I think I was watching these people go through like a really tough breakup. And and they were doing things like, because God said, God said, God said. And I was like, man, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I can buy that. Because if God said, then then it's, it's love. There's nothing but love in it. So If God said, and he's talking to you, and he's pushing you around and calling you names, there's no God in that. Because there's no love in that. That's not love. So, oh, the cat got me. So, you might hear a cat and dog fight. 
apropos timing. So the four step is all about looking at this. It's like, let's look at it. Let's see it for what it really is. Not to make us feel bad, but so that we could move on from it. So that we could work, we could continue to work on us, right? Which, you know, sobriety is a life, recovery is a lifetime thing. And that's okay. And that's okay. It's not, it's not something we're going to get a certificate for or ever graduate from. Well, it's something that we can continue to work for, for our lifetime. And it says here, man, all those years of, of, of living in our addiction, is, we can't fix all that overnight. There's, it's impossible. And then once we get to a point where we feel like, oh, man, we're cleaning our side of the street. It looks pretty good. The rest of the work is so that we can continue to elevate, right? So we come over here. We're coming out of here for the negatives. We're working on ourselves. We're feeling good, right? And then we start at zero where we should have been this whole time, you know. Um, not quite meeting all the goals from society, but still not 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 acting like a jerk, not drinking and driving, not drugging, not not hurting people, not fighting at bars. Not, you know, we we're doing pretty good. And if we're and just 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 a, a little check here, a little point that I want to make um, for a person like me. You know, alcoholic, recovering, recovering alcoholic. Person that recovered from other things too. To not do all those things, it's a big deal. To not drink and drive. To not start by fights. To, to not be trying to score some drugs at 3 o'clock in the morning. To to want to love for real, for real. Man, that's a big deal. Because there was a time we couldn't go seconds or days or minutes without drinking or, 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 or drug. Man, come on. Those of you who are... Who have struggled with addiction? You know it's hard, man. It's it's hard. And you and you try to you try to you say you're not gonna do it anymore. And next thing you know, you do. As soon as you feel better, your body starts to recuperate, and and you're back out again, right? I get it. I was that person, right? So so I understand that. So so we come from over here. We're coming this way. Now we're at, now we're at zero. We're like, oh yeah, life is good. Me and Jesus. And our recovery, or God, or your higher power, whatever your spiritual, your spiritual relationship, your spiritual power, your spirituality is grown. So, so if if you're feeling good, you've probably done some some work already, some real deep work, um, or just work. Um, so, so we're at zero now. We're like, all right, let, we're gonna graduate. Nope, we haven't arrived yet. Why? Because. I mean, you could stay there, but even even you really can't. There's no way. It's hard to stay stagnant in God's world. Because even if you're in one place, say you buy a house and you live in the same house for 30 years, you're still growing. Why? Because now, maybe you got a wife now. Maybe you got a family. All those, oh, <laughs> trust me, the, the family, man, they'll, they'll help you grow, okay? They'll, they'll bring you to the next level. Maybe you start your own business. That's the next level. Maybe you maybe you do a job change. That's the next level. Where you just keep moving up. We go positive, positive. And but guess what? While that is happening, a lot of this love and fear is happening. A lot of this courage is happening. A lot of this four step work is happening. A lot of digging deep deep is why? Because when we get to the next level, we're gonna need to I mean we can't go there till we work on some stuff right here. Right here. Man, I just, I feel so good right now. <laughs> I don't know why I had a hard day at work, right? And uh, I've had a, um, yesterday was like, it's kind of, it was, it was just one of those days. Um, but, but I felt better this morning. I felt better last night. And then I felt better this morning. And today I was like, okay, I felt focused at work. So I did that. It was brutal, right? There was a lot of stuff to do. Um, and I come here and I, you know, I, um, came home, took a shower, listened to a podcast, reading my books, and I'm thinking like, wow, man, there's, there's hope. There's hope for me. There's hope for you. There's hope for everybody. Folks, if you're feeling stuck, I get it. If you don't know where to go, I get it. You don't know what to do, I get it. You don't listen to, you don't know who to listen to, I get it. Can't get along with God, I get it. I get it, for real, for real. Why? Because that was me. That was me. That was me. Do you know? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to get a little bit on it. Well, I'm a, I think I'm going to. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life right now. Like stuff you stuff that's new. So kind of new. 
kind of new stuff and kind of old stuff. When my mom died, right? So so be when my mom was dying, I prayed a lot. I prayed a lot. I was like, God, I know you can heal, man. You, you, God, you can do anything. You can do anything. You can heal my mom. You can bring her back. And and she could be a hundred. She could, I mean, like, you can bring people back from the dead. I believe my mom's not dead yet. I believe that you can heal her completely. And I was praying and praying. And I was, I was, I was like by her bed praying. I stand up. I sit down. I kneel down. I lay beside her. I'm like, I would touch her head and her body. I would pray. I was praying that he would save my mom's life. That he wouldn't let her die right. And she died. And when my mom died, it, it got hard for me to pray. I really felt like what God had told me about who I was, about that I was that, that guy that was going to pray for people, that I was going to be able to, you know, move, move some stuff. I felt like it was a lie. I felt like that's not true. It's like, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not I'm not doing this not because I don't I wasn't believing in God, but because I didn't believe that he said that I was who he said I was because I prayed for my mom and, and my sister too and, and that hurt but man my mom, losing my mom was like it really got me in a funk. I was like, Man, I'm not gonna pray for her. I, I don't I don't want to pray for nobody, right? Because I prayed for my mom, and 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 she died. So I said, I don't have that power. That power you said that I have, I don't have it. And so I stopped praying, and I stopped. I stopped. Uh, I started doing other things except praying. And for the past two years, I've been, I I I pray, but not like I used to pray. You know, barely getting back into it, barely just kind of, uh, just, just, just kind of like feeling like I'm a newcomer again. Like I just, I'm just starting to build this relationship with, with God again, right? So, um, yesterday, you know, I had a rough day. Like it was a rough, I don't know why from the morning to right before I went to bed, it was, man, it was. It was strange, it was different, it was hard, it was rough, emotionally, spiritually, uh, taxing on my body, right, physically. So so it was rough, and, and I remember sometime during the day, something happened. Like, I started praying. I don't know where, I just started praying and praying and praying. And I started prophesizing. I was like, whoa, holy shit. Not not necessarily for somebody else, but in my life. When I was claiming back, I was claiming everything that he said that I that it was me that was taken away from me in these past two years. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I was that's the way I felt, right? And I was like, whoa, I hadn't done that in a while. I was like, okay, okay, am I am I could still have something? Am I could still have something, right? So then last night, I prayed a little bit more right before I go to bed. I said, whew, man, this power, it's, it's amazing. And then, and then, um, I remember this, this uh, today about, about noon, about one o'clock, I was sitting in my, in the van and man, I turned off the radio and and I just had me a prayer. I mean, I just, I just prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for, for others, for some, for, for some other people, some that are really, really dear to me and some that are not, some that I could, probably would even say I quite dislike, right? But I don't know them, but I just feel like I could be really I could be really jealous of them right now. I could really be envious of them right I could come in what they what they have right now. And I chose not to in that moment something happened. It was like God was changing me and that's it. And if you want to continue to change me some more then go I give you 
I mean, you have my permission. This is yours. This, this man right here, it's yours. Like, do with it what you want. And man, I had this, this peace. It just came over me. It was like, I felt covered. I felt covered and I hadn't felt that in a long time. I had little glimpses of it, I had moments of it, but what I felt today was like, whoa. And, and why did I bring that story up? First, I wanted to give you the history, right? Because I was, I was a man, I was a big time prayer, big, I was whew, huge. And then when my mom died, I said, maybe I don't got it, right? So I was just, I was praying, but I was, I wasn't praying like I was. You know, I wasn't praying these, I wasn't, I couldn't feel the power that I had before. And today what I felt, felt like that, what I used to have, what it used to feel like. And, but right before that, and I'll get to the point here in a minute. So right before that, I sent a text, right? To, to this girl I'm seeing. And I sent a text, uh, we, you know, we had like a disagreement. So we weren't seeing eye to eye or something, or maybe a little miscommunication. So, um, or, or a lot, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, miscommunication nonetheless. And so, and so um, right before I said that prayer, I sent a text. And And then later on, I remember thinking, man, Chris, you're, you're at such peace. I'm like, man, it would have been cool if you would have prayed that prayer before you sent the text. And I said, yeah, I think I, I need to start doing that. Before I, before I send text messages, maybe I gotta pray a little bit. So I'm not, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I, wanna, I don't wanna like hurt somebody, hurt people unintentionally even, I can do that. Anyway, so I'm just, I wanna be just, you know, I wanna work on it, I wanna really work on it. So, and I'm not gonna be perfect. Sometimes I am gonna, I, I, I mean, I take pride in sometimes, maybe it's not the greatest part of me, right? But to ruffle feathers and make waves and stir the pot. Sometimes I do. Um, But also I'm working on, on, on uh, kindness and loving everybody. Uh, you, you've heard me share, right? That I don't always feel like I can love those that I hate uh, or that I dislike. So anyway, so um, so I was like, yeah, I, re I, I think I should start praying before I send these text messages or at least reread them so that I'm, so that I'm being, what I wanna say is, is, is being clear. It's not clear, not, not, not coming out of a, a, a sour space, right? So then I said, yeah, I think I'm gonna start doing that. And then the, I heard the voice, ah, that voice, God, I love that voice. That voice, it says, no, Chris, there's no way you could have said that prayer before that text because you sent that text and you felt a certain kind of way and that certain kind of way is what made you start praying. That feeling that you got after you sent the text was what got you to where you needed to be so you could get one-on-one -on -one with God and you could start talking and you could start asking and you could start a part of, and you could start asking for what it is you really want and you could start praying for other people. See, I needed I needed that one one text to make me feel a certain way so I could have this, so I could get there. What was that? It was a bottom. It was about, it's like when I was, when I was drinking, I wasn't done till I was done. I, it wasn't the bottom till it was. It wasn't my last drunk till my last drunk. It wasn't my last beer till my last beer. I couldn't have done it one beer before, one drunk before, one um, messed up relationship before, one, one bad text before no it had to be that one it had to be that moment it had to be right then and there because that was a little push that took me to where i needed to be why did i say all that i 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I, but anyway, that's the story. And that, that was, that's the end of it. And that was like, okay. Okay. It's good. It's good. Nothing's completely messed up yet. I could probably, I'm going to hang in there and do what I can do without tearing anybody down or myself, without disrespecting anybody or myself, without, and that's totally opposite. It, do I have fear? Yeah, but I have love too. That's totally opposite of, I was gonna say, that's totally opposite of what I used to do when my fear was bringing out my character defects. But not my fear is like, man, okay. My fear, I have healthy fears, right? Because there's such thing as healthy fears, like uh, uh, fear of, um, uh, say you go skydiving and you're getting close to the ground. You might have some fear. That's why you open the parachute, right? So there, there is healthy fears. That's probably not the best example, but there is some, there's some out there. But sometimes my fears, especially when I'm in a bad space, they, they set all my defects and I become this person who I said I didn't want to become or who or this person that I thought I was done with or this person that, that I thought I wasn't that person anymore, right? And there's no love in that. So... I do believe that that um, I can love even with some fear in me, because for me it it it's been love. Love is sometimes scary for me, so I've been hurt before because people leave my life because I've left people. So it could, it, could, it could be a little bit scary and I don't want to hurt nobody, right? Um, so I, I get a little bit of fear. And I really think, man, with the courage, that, that's where the love comes in. To have courage to, to, to do it in fear. To be able to tell somebody how I really feel. I don't have a problem telling people negative stuff. I have a problem telling people the good stuff. I have a problem showing people love. I can show them ratchet. I can show them hate. I can show them anger. I can show them um, all these other defects that I have but um, that are activated by fear. But I, I, I don't. it's those other ones that I... That, that I that I need courage to show the intimate the intimate the intimacy right to be able to uh, I don't mean just like hold somebody's hand I mean I don't mean like just have sex but it is like holding somebody's hand or giving somebody a hug or hanging out with people um letting people in into my personal life more than just the stories on this video you know my personal space all that is like stuff that I've been working on. So, so this this um, these past few few days, I mean, like it's really it's been nice. It hasn't it doesn't look nice sometimes on the outside and conversations I had, but internally, man, it's just like whoa, something's going on, something's going on, and I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful that I have these books. I'm really grateful that I have recovery. I'm, I'm grateful that I have someone of a clear mind today, right? That I'm not drinking and drugging over this. I'm grateful that um, I'm, I'm learning. Uh, you know, I always encourage people, man, maybe this video doesn't work for you. Get another video. <laughs> Get something. There's so many good videos. I just ran it. When I didn't run into one, somebody suggested a video. And that first one was good. The second one was like... It was deep, but I listened to it. And this third one is so much fun and it's so good. Um, and this this uh, podcast that I'm listening to, it's called My Future Wifey. 
So if uh, anybody's interested, go check it out. It's really, really good. I encourage people um, to to uh, seek, right? To seek what works for them, what gets them to their next level, what fulfills them, what um, that doesn't have anything to do with with um, outside stuff like money or women or men or whatever. Whatever you're grabbing for to try to fill that void. Now, you know what? One one good podcast can do more for you than, than, than all the money in the world, man. I swear, it's priceless. It's priceless. So, folks, I hope, thank you for your time. Uh, I know I got long-winded. I probably was not even on topic. Uh, but thank you for hanging out with me. Uh, I will continue to come. Uh, I'm going to continue these uh, pod, these uh, these videos for a while. Um, I'm trying to do one every day, but I haven't really like been able to or, or haven't really. But I really like hanging out with y'all, and I really like sharing with y'all what I've learned. And hopefully, hopefully somebody has uh, has heard something that can help them, has... has um, you know, maybe heard something that can maybe help somebody else. And, and if you're recovering if you're from, from anything and you feel uh, stuck, I encourage you, man, unstuck yourself. Let's go. You're not a tree. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You can do it. You can do it. And step seven, our seven tradition says that we are self-supporting through our own contributions. In other words, we are responsible for our own emotional sobriety, our spiritual sobriety, our physical sobriety, our mental sobriety, right? Our emotional sobriety, all of it. We are. We are. And people will help us. People will encourage us. People will motivate us. Our was our husbands, our wives, our our friends, man. They they're they're they they they're, they're rooting for us. But we gotta do the work. We have to put action toward. Okay. So I pray that you today will put action to whatever it is that you're seeking, what you're looking for. Um, whether it be finding a job or putting yourself out there, maybe in the dating game again. All right, because we're not, we're not. Some of us are gonna are are gonna be single forever, but we're, we're you know some of us are not. And if that's not you, then get out there, man. Get out there, um, and build relationships with your friends, with your coworkers, with your lover. And and don't don't be stuck, man. Don't be stuck. It's it's. Watching a movie or two, that, that's cool. Maybe you want to veg one day, that's cool. But man, don't stay stuck. It's, it's only one life, only got one. Unstuck yourself. Um, go out there. Go out there and live your life, man. Live your life. I remember the day that that uh, that, that I, made, I came to the realization that I only have one life and that I'm gonna live it the best that I possibly can. Man, it, it, my life's never been the same. Has it been perfect? No, do I mess up? Of course I do. Do I take the wrong turns all the time? But you know what? It's good. That journey is good. It's good. So folks, get out there. Live your life. Uh, share this po podcast. Comment. Like. Anything you want. Um, and uh, please, don't, don't, don't ever stop seeking. There's a lot of information out there. Good and bad. Listen to your gut. Right? Listen to your desires. If they align with you, go for it. And if they don't, let it go, man. Let it go. All right. Well, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for your time. Bye.